Sing in me, muse, the epic tale of that earth daughter who shook the foundations of the dark towers and challenged in combat the dread lords of tyranny and their master, the patriarch of death. Before the book, back in the dreaming, over eons of shaman lore, it was attested that light is restoration for those who are eaten by their shadows, and fire is the bane of phantoms. From somewhere here, muse, begin. The woman warrior princess, Ona Trueheart, shook her beautiful head with the flowing locks. She shook her beautiful head, topped by the shining helmet, with the flowing plume of rainbow colors. Ona lifted her invincible weapons of light and fire in an honoring gesture to all fathering son. She chanted her kindred chant to elder sister moon. She made a prayer offering to all mothering earth. Then Ona unleashed from her throat a furious battle cry, the battle cry that confounds wrongdoers who oppose her and shakes the foundations of injustice. Ona Trueheart mounted her winged horse with the flowing mane and tail. Feathers of the wing on the mount's left side were pure radiance of golden white light. Feathers of the wing on the mount's right side were shimmering iridescence of rainbow colors. Ona Trueheart was one, yet she was many. She emerged from the realm of the mothers, she came out from the council of all beings. Behind her gathered the guardians and ancient spirits who do not age. In the onslaught of battle, the cosmic green dragon mirrored in her woman warrior's heart breathes fire through her mouth and nostrils. In the onslaught of battle, lightning shoots from her spell-casting eyes. Ona rode forth in the direction of the dark towers of power, seeking battle against the forces of evil. Myriad were the bright-eyed maidens, Myriad the long-haired youth of the shires, Who pledged loyalty to the woman warrior, And followed her path on the beauty way. When the battle cry of Ona Trueheart Rang out from her throat in thundering truth force, It shook the foundations of the dark towers of power. Gripped by prophetic fear, soothsayers and practitioners of black magic hastened to assemble in the grand hall of the dark lords. Among the assembly of ministers, counselors, warlords, vassals, robber barons, assassins, and astrologers. The richest and most powerful was first to speak. Sunken-eyed and discolored with seething contempt, the dread lord proclaimed loudly, Oh, the truard comes against us. She comes to do battle. She has emerged from the realm of the mothers. She comes out from the council of all beings. 
Honey is one, yet she is many. Gathered to her are the guardians and ancient spirits who do not age. Ona rides the winged horse. The woman warrior bears the invincible weapons of light and fire. The speaker paused as a stirring and grumbling rippled throughout the vast hall. The chief lord of corruption resumed. She plans to put an end to the cruelty that is our power to govern. She plans to stop the wickedness by which we prosper. The sound of true heart cannot be defeated. She comes in the prophecy made long ago by land dreamers and water dreamers and the keepers of the animals that have perished at our hands. It was then that the eldest and most timorous of the dark lords cried frantically, Let us flee! Quick! We must run! We must hide! Before we are taken captive and wealth and power are stripped from us. Yes! And he agreed as panic took hold of the assembly. To where shall we run? Where will we hide? When among the stricken ask. Another of the order of dread and terror added, To what place where the light will not expose us? Even shadows that have served our every speak secret now quake and are scattered and shrink before the woman's quickening approach, before the judgment of her battle cry. Hearing these words voiced in the contagion of fear, the Patriarch of Death arose from his throne of skulls and bones and shouted menacingly a wrathful reproach, Cowards! Cowards all! For generations our kind has held the world by the throat. How skilled we have been at war! How skilled in covert operations, in cunning! Our order is unrivaled unrivaled in the art of betrayals. The Patriarch of Death cast a baleful eye at his followers, then resumed his proclamation. Now are we to flee before a woman? This only true heart is little more than a girl. She rides this way in search of victory, a contemptible gesture. As the ruler of rulers spoke, the dark towers shook in their foundations a second time. Once again, Ona had unleashed her furious battle cry that confounds wrongdoers who oppose her and shakes the foundations of injustice. Upon this tremor, Master of the Dark Lords clutched his massive battle axe and swung it in rage over his head, next stabbing and hacking at the empty air before him. Call out the armies, the Patriarch commanded. Assemble the battalions in battle formation. He laughed cruelly, and his laughter sounded like a storm rumbling through the great chamber. Ona Truart approaches, dreaming of victory. She will receive defeat and death at our hands. Away, make ready. This day we will drink the heart blood of Ona, a woman, lamb of the dreamers. Ona arrived at the dark towers of power. Battle was joined, the battle between light and darkness, between good and evil, between life and death, between treachery and truth. In the onslaught, the cosmic green dragon, mirrored in her woman warrior's heart, breathes fire from her mouth and nostrils. In the onslaught, 
lightning shoots from her spell-casting eyes. Many are those in the ranks of corruption who yield before the woman warrior's radiant light. Many are those who surrender to the beatitude of the woman warrior's love. Victory is won through love's purity and courage. Only by love are the dark lords vanquished, the dark towers brought down to the shared abundance of the earth, and the patriarch of the order of dread and terror forever exiled from the decency of the world. Today this story is a forecast, like a comet crossing the sky of time, it is not yet, yet it is to be.